name is Michelle Hearn, and I'm a registered and licensed dietitian. And thank you so much for joining us on my YouTube channel. This is The Dietitian's Dilemma, where we talk about our nutrition guidelines and how they mm, might not be the best for you and your lifestyle. We also talk about getting back to a more um, a ketogenic, primal, paleo-type diet. Today, I am super excited to have one of like my nutrition heroes on. This is Brian Sanders. He's on Instagram at food.lies. Brian, thank you so much for taking the time today. Hi, Michelle. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is so cool. All right. Well, for anybody who's been uh, living under a rock in the ketogenic or carnivore community that may not know like who you are and what you're about, can you just talk a little bit about your background and kind of um, your views on nutrition? Yeah, well, I started as a mechanical engineer. So, you know, I don't have a strong nutrition background, but I think that may help me sometimes because some of the doctors I know, they went down this route of the, the standard guidelines and went through their training and they kind of have clouded judgment, I guess you could say, are these entrenched beliefs. And so I came at it from a more engineering perspective. You know, it's a root cause. Like, what's the root cause of the problem? <laughs> and a lot of medicine these days, they treat the symptoms of the problem, right? And they give you a pill and they give you, you know, this and that and you leave. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it helped me. But I, I've been on this journey for, you know, about five to seven years now and, you know, have dedicated my life to this. So I feel like I, I, I have a strong background in, you know, like figuring out the science and talking. I talked to over 150 people in the health space, all the, you know, the biggest names I could get, all the interesting people from all sides, learned a lot. And uh, yeah, so I'm making a film about it called Food Lies. And that's helped me, you know, get access to all these great scientists and doctors and uh, nutrition people. Uh, that have helped form my views on nutrition. And so my, the, yeah, the overview is my job, I feel like is just to uh, communicate these ideas, right? So I, I synthesize them, I, commu I, I uh, you know, research all sides of nutrition and even ancestral health and evolution and archaeology and, you know, just figure all this stuff out and, and try to disseminate it to the public in an easy to understand way. Ah, oh, that's, that's fantastic. I feel, I mean, you said so much in that, um, but yeah, when you break it back down, uh, and you might actually have an advantage because, you know, I, I went through the traditional, um, dietetics path, you know, and we do, we are taught these very specific guidelines. And of course in the hospital setting, I'm not allowed to deviate from these guidelines. And I often wonder what maybe potentially how different things would have been if I hadn't initially stepped in that. And I just had kind of gone the route you did and really took a step back and said, okay, this is how humans evolved. We were, we were so much healthier and now we're seeing this chronic disease. And so now I've kind of had to like reverse engineer and be like, okay, I've been a dietitian for 11 years and I've seen massive suffering. You know, I've seen diabetes, I've seen stroke, um, you know, cancer rates, uh, geez, heart disease. Uh, even since the last decade that I've been a dietitian, the rates have increased, the suffering has increased. And what I'm told in my profession is the problem is that patients just really aren't following the nutrition guidelines. Where if we just ate more fruits and vegetables, if we just ate more healthy whole grains, then we'd be just fine. And I actually dug into the research and guess what? We are eating. <laughs> since the 1970s, we actually are eating uh, about 9% more fruits and vegetables. We are eating about 21% more whole grain. And guess what? We're also eating less red meat, less pork, less eggs, all the things the nutrition guidelines would tell us should be, we should be really healthy. And of course, at the same time, um, seed oils have gone through the roof, you know, canola oil. And so what, you know, I know that you, you have, you're a proponent for what you call the sapien diet. Can you tell us just a little bit about like, what, what, what is that? Yeah, it, it's funny. Uh, just to go back a little on what you said and, and how wrong we got it, right? Like everything that we thought was correct it's you kind of almost do the opposite and you'll be healthy and it, it's really sad and we're going to cover this in the film like all all the stuff he's just said because we are doing what they said and it didn't work and i was just thinking about it yesterday actually when i was i was sprinting i love to do these like you know short workouts of intense workouts and people for all of history had the right idea with trial and error and observations, right? For like a million years of pre-humans and in ancient humans, a hundred thousand, couple hundred thousand years ago, we, we figured out we're healthy. We use our senses. Then we had this era of science in the last hundred years where we're like, oh, wow, we have instruments, you know, we can figure things out. Like, oh, there's a pill. We can make compounds and molecules and feed them to people. And, and this is going to cure everything. And once we went down that path, 
it kind of deviated our course of history and we got really messed up right as a population and now i feel like we're entering this era of correcting all that and going back to our roots and going back now and we have new science to show that all the things we thought for the past 50 years turn out to be wrong so it's yes. great that we're doing all this new research and you know there's great scientists studying ketogenic diets and ancestral diets and you know it, it's it's awesome but it, it's just so funny how backwards we got it like how exactly wrong we got it so a, a sapien diet is really just going back to those roots right it's what should homo sapiens eat and it's it's a framework it's not just one diet you know i mean i think anyone can thrive on a more animal based diet without any processed foods but not everyone has to follow the exact same pattern but it's 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 very simple though you know like i, I don't i'm not tied to like one way of eating other than what i said is like including a lot of animal foods where all the bioavailable nutrition is not eating processed foods not eating the sugars refined grains and seed oils and you're you're eighty percent there, right? I mean, yes, we can tweak it, and we can, you know, maybe some problem foods with some plant foods, or there's some different, uh, you know, fat to whatever ratios. But I mean, that's the basics. Yeah, and that's what I found so so beautiful about like a carnivore-based diet, um, and even like yeah, the sapien diet is that it is so simple. Like as humans, we have vastly overcomplicated it. And it's interesting. You made a really good point that people they have the wrong information. You know, if I go into most of my hospital patients, let's say I have a patient who's diabetic, who's overweight, and I go in and talk to them, they'll often tell me like, oh yeah, I, I eat healthy. I eat salad and brown rice and chicken. And well, one, they probably don't do that because their blood, <laughs> blood sugar is really <laughs> high. But that's their idea of healthy. That is their general idea. And, you know, it's not uncommon. You know, we put people on these heart healthy diets, which are terrible for their heart, but they're basically low fat, um, low fat, high carbohydrate diets. And people will sneak food in. People have family members sneak food in. I had a diabetic patient like wheel themselves in a wheelchair out of the hospital. You can't put people, you can't ask people to follow an eating regimen where they're hungry, you know, where um, they're not getting the nutrition, which I'm with you. I believe that most nutrition, I believe the, the studies show that the most highly uh, bioavailable, absorbable nutrition comes from those animal products, you know, the muscle meats the organ tissues. Um, you know, I'm also, I'm someone who eats dairy, eats some cheese. And when we feed people in a way that you get that fat, that you get that protein, you know, not only does it, does it heal your body and allow you to, um, you know, have a, have a healthy, normal BMI, normal weight. And also what we're seeing is it has, um, a dramatic impact on your brain. You know, that I've had several guests on that have talked about, um, you know, anxiety, myself included, just so much better anxiety reduction and depression, all kinds of, you know, just stable, stable energy. Since you've switched your diet, um, well, I guess you could tell us maybe even back up, like, what did you used to eat? You said it's been five to seven years. Like, can you, did you all, always follow a diet like this or how did you kind of mm. come to this? Well, yeah. The, uh, so five years ago is when I really started changing and, and focusing on it because my parents both, I lost both my parents from eating the standard American diet and they weren't eating fast food. We were cooking our own food and we were eating the food pyramid. And it just slowly crept up with them. It, it's it's how it works. Is you also mentioned satiety, right? It's like if you're hungry, I think this is the root of health is satiety and and managing weight. And if you're eating that type of standard American diet, you're never satisfied, and you end up just eating more and snacking, and then it's like, oh, I need dessert, and it, you're just never satisfied. So. So yeah, so about five years ago is when I kind of woke up, although I was I was kind of getting some, you know, on the right track up to seven years ago. And uh, it, it took me a while to implement in my life. And I'm not saying it's easy for everyone to do overnight either, right? I, I had my own journey of getting there and and trying and cutting out foods to get to where I'm at. But I, I actually looked back and realized that before that, for all throughout my 20s, I was eating the standard American diet. And I in, in a, no, no, not center. I mean, the food pyramid, sorry, the healthy version of the food pyramid <laughs> diet. And I was a mess. Like I was just getting, I was cooking all my own food. I was doing, like you said, I made the rice. It's like brown rice and the broccoli and the chicken breast and lean chicken, all that type of stuff. And I just, what, my body composition was terrible. I was wearing four, I had four pant size bigger. 
and I even thought I was in shape. I had a chronic injuries to my wrists and arms from the, you know chronic overuse. I had all kinds of little stuff. I would get sick all the time. And once I just made these simple changes of yeah, when you know getting fat adapted, eating ancestral foods, the all that stuff went away. I dropped down. I bought, had to buy new board shorts and all these things. And I yeah, I could use the computer again. And it was very simple because all I did was swap out, you know, the rice and the bread with some mushrooms or some avocado. And that's all. That's it. I mean, it's really simple. I'm just, and then just eat a little more animal foods. <laughs> and, yeah. And, so, and I want to yeah. dive into like a little bit more of the specifics because I'm with you. It's my, um, yeah, and I'm, I'm writing a book. So I'm super excited to hear that you're making a movie that I believe when we align with human physiology, meaning like what can, what are humans designed to eat? And I also agree that there is some flexibility within that. I think, you know, sometimes we want this, it's, you know, it's kind of this all or nothing, but I do believe that most of our diet should be animal-based products. You know, just, I'm similar, like you said, I think um, that's kind of the foundation of health just because of all, not only the amino acids and some of the substances like the creatine, carnosine, um, you know, leucine, but also, you know, the, the very highly absorbable fat soluble vitamins, the A, D, A, uh, A, D, E, K, mm-hmm. and uh, the B vitamins, all these different things. And also, of course, the lack of the anti-nutrients, you know, and we could probably do a whole podcast just on that. <laughs> um, yeah, but that is, that's just, that's, that's, it, it sounds almost too good to be true. And this is what makes me really frustrated because, you know, in a hospital setting, um, it's if somebody just orders a lunch, if let's say they were too tired to order lunch and we just send them a tray, they're going to get somewhere between 80 and 130 grams of carbs per meal. You know, right now they're going to get a side of uh, bread. They're going to get like a mashed potato. They're going to get some juice. They're going to get a cookie. And this is what's seen as the a, a good, healthy meal. And unfortunately, what you're seeing, you made a really good point that this diet sets you up to be hungry. It blows my mind when I used to follow a very high carbohydrate diet. I'm a distance runner. I could eat up to a thousand calories at 8 a.m. And by 11, my, I felt hungry. I felt dizzy and shaky. It wasn't because I didn't have enough calories. Lord knows I had tons of calories. But when you eat in a way that, you know, you eat so many carbohydrates, even if they're the quote unquote healthy carbohydrates, the brown rices, that, you know, juice, the bananas, when your blood sugar goes up, you know, we just don't teach people and explain the, the, the cascade that happens in your body. So I'm a huge fan too of keeping insulin levels low. I think we need to follow a diet that keeps insulin levels low. And when you're eating carbohydrates once, twice, you know, most Americans eight or nine times a day, you're, you're not only asking to kind of ride this energy high and low throughout the day, you're also not only storing fat, but it's incredibly inflammatory. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that so many runners actually even have problems and they're, they can be thin, but they have inflammatory problems because they're eating so many carbohydrates. And it's a great point to bring up in your time with the insulin and the blood sugar roller coaster. When are you going to be in fat burning mode if you're constantly eating all these carbs? Right. It's like there's 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 two modes. It's like kind of an on or off switch. I mean, if you're constantly just p- putting more glucose in your body, then it switches to fat. You're not you're not you're not burning fat. You're storing fat. So it's a really crazy idea. They're like, oh, yeah, eat six to eight small meals and keep your metabolism going. And I don't, I don't know how, how much how wrong you can get. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kind of yeah. wonder. I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it definitely seems like it, you know, if you're, if, but if you're giving people carbohydrates and especially like diabetics and you're constantly having to use insulin, I mean, you know, I, I had a, I had a woman on that said, you know, I actually, she was on diabetic medication and she said, if I didn't eat enough carbohydrates, I could go hypoglycemic. So it's almost like you're setting people up to fail. And I think as opposed to, you know, I know, and I, and I believe there's wonderful doctors in the medical industry. I often think like, you know, like your experience is they just don't know. They're just taught like, Hey, when someone's doing this, we treat it with this medication versus what if we started with diet? You know, by the mm-hmm. time I see most hospital patients, they are so sick. It is, it is unusual to see someone on less than a dozen medications, you know? And so we're almost just like band-aiding people versus like, hey, let's remove these um, inflammatory foods. I saw a study recently that somebody was, um, they were able to get people off uh, up to 150 units of insulin at, with, within nine days nine days and all they did was they took out the carbohydrates they followed a significantly less carbohydrate diet um yeah for me kind of the turning point like you mentioned it with runners 
is I am a long distance runner. I've been running marathons um, for 10 years, you know, qualified for Boston 12 times. And I wanted to qualify for the Olympic trials um, in the marathon. So you have to run under 245. I, I know illusions of making the Olympic team. I'm no Shalane Flanagan or Kara Goucher, but I wanted to like line up and I'd run uh, 250, 255. So it was 10 minutes mm. away. But as I was training more and more, my muscles, I just wasn't recovering well. And I was, you know, I did what a lot of athletes will do. And I just kind of doubled down. I was eating 350, almost 400 grams of carbs a day. So I was like, well, maybe I'll eat 500. And so I'm sure, you know, to do that. I mean, I'm drinking maltodextrin juice and it got to the point where I couldn't go for a two mile run without breaking out in a cold sweat. I was waking up in the middle of the night with these muscle aches and pain and my joints hurt. And, you know, I reached out to people. I said, I'm, I'm, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And they just were like, look, you're just too old. You're too old to run. I'm almost 37. And I kind of had a pivotal moment where I ended up, um, <laughs> well, I can't, woke up in the middle of the night. My muscles hurt. I actually drove to 7-Eleven, got 30 pounds of ice, like put it in the bathtub and just sat there and just was crying. And, you know, at that point, my, my wife was like, okay, we got to try something else. And so at that point, I thought I'm going to have to quit running. Like I'm no longer going to be able to run. Um, and I was kind of tried to be at peace with it. But then I thought, well, if I'm not running, then I can follow this low carbohydrate diet. I'd always, I like meat, I like fat. And within a week, things were so much better. I could not believe. And then once, you know, I got fat adapted, now I can run so much better. It's like, it's so interesting because we're taught like, hey, you're not going to be able to participate in sport or you're not going to be able to do that without all these carbohydrates. If you chat with any sports dietitian, they're going to tell you 50, 60, 70% carbohydrates. And my diet right now is, I mean, my volume is relatively low. I'm only running like uh, 50, 55 miles a week, but I'm having less than 50 grams of carbs a day. So. Yeah. Well, I have a friend, Zach Bitter, who has the 100 mile world record and, you know, distance, you know, ultra marathon people will know about him. And he's eating mostly meat most of the time. Yeah. And I mean, he, and he's doing great. And he talks about all the same things, you know, going away from all the carbs and much better recovery. He has consistent energy just fine. I actually did a decathlon last year and wow. um, did it with no carbs, barely at all. And I was training at UCLA and everyone there thought I was crazy. It was so funny. All these like 21 year olds athletes are like, you don't eat carbs. Like, I don't they're like, where do you get your energy? I'm like, fat, you get yeah. your energy. Fat. And I did, uh, there was no decathlon in the uh, masters games in Toronto where I, I competed. There was a pentathlon and I did it fasted. I don't even know what I was doing. I just like didn't eat. <laughs> and I just showed up at noon and did it until 5 p.m. And then, you know, I, I ate some I ate like a couple burger patties at like 6 p.m. And so it was and I beat most people. I, I came in second in my age group. And, you know, the last event was a 1500. And I, you know, I beat almost everyone except for one guy and, and no one could figure it out. And so. <laughs> Yeah, people just don't know about it. And, and there's another story with Professor Tim Noakes, if people have heard of him in South oh, yeah. Africa, right? So he was a marathoner. He wrote the book on running. He wrote, yeah, you know, he wrote, he wrote and, running. That's like the, the Roar of Run Bible I used to read. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he was promoting all the high carb diets and all that. And he got pre diabetes as a thin man, as an athlete, got pre diabetes, ripped out, publicly ripped out the pages of that book uh, on that he wrote about all the carbs and is now a huge low carb advocate and is doing well. And, you know, I, I've seen him around at some conferences lately and he, he's, he's great. So yeah, a lot of people just don't know this information. Um, I don't, I don't know. I guess we, we can just get the information out there or let them know it's an option at least. I mean, that's one of my big goals is it's so hard to change these big governing bodies and, you know, the, let's change the entire like dietary guidelines. And I don't think it's ever going to happen where they're just like, yep, we were wrong. We're going to do ancestral eating, but at least we can make it an option and, you know, say, Hey, there's this other way of eating that is perfectly viable. So that's, that's my goal is get the information out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is, that is exactly, I'm, I'm right there with you. I actually, um, several years ago when I was first a dietitian, the clinical director at the hospital I was working at was actually the president of, it was called at that time, the, um, the Dietetics, American Dietetics Association. They've now changed their name to Academy of Nutrition. And that's my governing board that governs all dietitians. And I came to her and said, look, I, I don't understand these guidelines. Um, and that time we were sponsored by Coca-Cola and Hershey's. Those were our two biggest sponsors. Now, um, Pepsi, it's no longer Coca-Cola, but it's PepsiCo, which also owns, you know, Frito-Lay and Quaker Oats. 
um, as well as General Mills are some of the biggest sponsors of the Dietetics Association. And that at our big conference in 2019, uh, GlaxoKlein-Smith, one of the makers of diabetic drugs was a big sponsor. And, you know, you come back and you say like, look, this, you know, you can advocate, you can, and then I've been told so many times, just like, look, you're never going to change. You're never going to change the guidelines. You're never, there's just too much money and there's too much power. And so like you, I said, okay, cool. I'm not going to change the guidelines. I want, I want to get this information out. I want people to know they don't have to suffer. I want people to know there's a better way to live. There's a better way to eat. This has completely changed my life. Um, my, my family's life. I mean, I'm a better, I'm a better wife. I'm a better employee. I'm a better athlete. I, I wake up and I feel excited about the world, you know, and just like, just like you, I, I feel like we want, we have this information and yes, we're probably not going to change the big governing boards. If anybody's ever worked in policy, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scene. There's a lot of money that happens, but if people can at least understand like, Hey, you know what? You did, there's a different option. And what I found that most people, like once they try to eat this way, you know, first it sounds overwhelming, like, Oh my gosh, I got to give up my bread. But you have that satiety. You're not hungry. You have that energy. You feel amazing. Um, yeah, I think I think giving people a different option is is really the way to go. Well, you know, we we actually doing this in the film. We followed a woman around L.A. for almost a year, oh, wow. and yeah, and she she started off. We we had this first like kind of like casting interview of her, and she was trying to be an actress, and she's like, I am trying my hardest. This is my job is to look good. I'm eating healthy. And it's not working. You know, she was maybe 40, 50 pounds overweight. All we did, we, we, I, you know, I coached her on how to do it. Just told her just, we're, we're not going to count calories. We're not going to count macros. We're not going to do any of this. We're just going to change the way, just change your food choice, right? Change the way you eat. And amazing changes, you know, just changed her life. Lost 30 pounds very quickly. She started getting her confidence back. She started singing again. She's doing all these things that she wasn't doing before. We yeah. started her eating less times per day, right? She only ate twice a day now, perfectly satiated, perfect, you know, felt great, constant energy. It like everything about her life has gotten better. We we kind of talk about the the weight loss as just being a side effect. Like that was yeah. like the least important part. Right to her, she's just like, I got my life back. She looks yeah. amazing. She started dancing again. She started joining these different clubs. She started volunteering in her community. Like it was amazing. So I don't know if it, it's scary at first or if or what, or people think they don't want to change. And I, I visited Arkansas recently, which is very interesting to see people with very different eating habits uh, than I see around LA. And LA has their own problems. LA has the whole vegan thing where everyone thinks you have to be vegan to be healthy. But to see these people in Arkansas kind of have these this idea that, that we started in the beginning talking about is that I'm doomed. This is my life. This is how I am. And they will always be eating. There's a guy who told me the the less I eat, the fatter I get. He's like, yeah, the less I eat, the fatter I get. And I'm like, that's the problem. You're trying so hard to count calories or like eat less. And then you're just eating more without even knowing it. And then yes, you are gaining weight. And yes, you're eating the wrong foods too, right? If you're eating, you're trying to eat the wrong foods or try to eating less of the wrong foods, it's never going to work. So this is one of my big things is it, it will never work to eat just the long term. It will never work to eat the wrong, the same foods and try to just eat less of them. That is an insane thing. And I know you can eat any diet and lose weight. That's not the point because that's a short term. You can eat famously. There's a Twinkie diet, right? This guy eats Twinkies, right? And he, he lost weight, right? That's that's not the point. You can lose weight on anything. But the, there's so many more factors in is this gonna how's this gonna work long term or are you losing muscle all right you guys my name is michelle hearn and i'm a registered and licensed dietitian thank you so much for watching part one of our two-part series so now stay tuned for the rest of the story